Tom's mother let out a loud, vigorous cough as she lay in bed. Tom rushed to her side and helped her sit up, trying to make her as comfortable as possible. He gently held a glass of water to her lips, and she took small sips. Two days ago, she had caught a cold, and it had escalated into the flu, leaving her weak and miserable with a constantly runny nose. With each passing second, the coughing fit only intensified, the harsh sounds filling the room and making Tom's anxiety spike. Tom rubbed her back softly, trying to calm her down, but the coughing refused to subside. Her face turned red, and her eyes watered from the strain. Tom's fear grew, and he asked her if he could do anything else to help her. She tried to respond, but another coughing fit took over, leaving her gasping for air. Tom felt a lump form in his throat as he watched Grace, his mother, struggle. He held her close, trying to comfort her, and whispered, It's okay, Mom. I'm here. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the coughing began to slow down, and his mother's breathing gradually returned to normal. With a weak smile, she reassured Tom, I'm fine, sweetie. But Tom's concern lingered, and he knew he needed to do more to help his mother feel better. She told him not to worry himself and to get ready for school. He would be late if he didn't leave on time. Tom frowned. He was reluctant to leave his mother alone at home. He tried to protest, but she insisted that he go. She didn't want him to miss school because of her illness. Tom finally gave in reluctantly and agreed to go. However, he refused to leave until he'd packed lunch for her, so she could have something to eat before he returned from school in the afternoon. Tom promised to get her some medicine on his way home so she could take them and get better soon. His mother smiled weakly, touched by Tom's care and kindness. She gestured for him to come to her for a hug, and Tom gladly obeyed. I'm proud of you, my dear son. Thank you for everything, Grace told him with a smile as she stroked his head. Tom hugged her back, telling her to get well soon because she was all he had. Tom gave his mother one last look before grabbing his bag and hurrying out of the house. According to his calculations, if he rushed to the bus stop, he would be able to make it in time to catch the bus to school. So, he quickened his pace. As he walked, Tom's mind began to wander back to his life at home. He thought about his family and how things had been since his father left. Tom's father had walked out on them one day when Tom was just six years old. It was an ugly scene when his father declared that he had fallen in love with someone else and wasn't going to live with them anymore. How could you do this to our family? What about Tom? His mother yelled, tears streaming down her face. His father screamed back that he didn't want to be with her anymore. It was suffocating to live in the same house with someone he had fallen out of love with. I will never forgive you for destroying our family, for hurting our son, Grace yelled. In a mocking voice, Tom's father told her that he didn't need her forgiveness. Without saying one more word, he packed his bags and left. For a long time, Grace was depressed and furious. Tom watched the separation take a toll on his beloved mother. He saw it break her. He would catch her crying silently in the room sometimes. He didn't know what to do to console his mother. A little boy like him could only watch her helplessly or hug her sometimes. He did his best to help with the house chores, knowing his mother had to work two jobs just to support them both. Tom grew up watching his mother struggle to provide for him. He appreciated her for it and was quite protective of her. It was him and his mother against the world. At 10 years old, he was already smarter and more observant than kids his age. He knew how to run errands for his mother whenever she was too busy. Tom was also good at math and could calculate money without losing it. He understood everything he needed to do and made things easier for his mom. He always felt a strong urge to always protect her. As he sprinted to the bus stop, guilt gnawed at him for leaving her alone. He remembered how she had shivered through the night, even though he'd offered her their only blanket. When he woke, she had covered him instead. He quietly tucked it back around her, ensuring she was warm. Now, he wished he could skip school to stay with her, but he had promised to go. He couldn't turn back, no matter how much he wanted to. He reached the bus stop just as a bus pulled up. He boarded with a few others and took a seat. As the bus moved, he kept thinking about his mother, hoping she'd get better soon. The bus moved on, stopping at one point to pick up more passengers. More people got on the bus, some even had to stand since all the seats were taken. Tom looked around and saw a heavily pregnant woman standing. She was struggling to hold on to the railings. He looked around to see if someone would offer their seat to the woman, but they just pretended not to see her. Some even turned the other way. Tom felt a bit shocked that not even one person could sacrifice their seat for her. Couldn't they be kind enough to see that she was struggling because she was heavily pregnant? The woman reminded him of his mother and everything she went through to protect and provide for him. Tom stood up and walked up to the woman with a soft smile. He asked her to take his seat, telling her he could stand for the rest of the ride. The woman turned to the boy in surprise and let out a sigh of relief. 
She exclaimed gratefully, Thank you so much, boy. The woman, eight months pregnant, sat down, relieved after the shaky ride, especially with the grocery bags she had placed on the floor of the bus. The bus kept on going, and the woman decided to make conversation with the kind young man who had helped her out. She introduced herself as Camille. She told him she hadn't planned on taking the bus, but it was an emergency. Tom listened as the woman rambled on about her hectic day. She seemed quite stressed and needed to let it out. He listened attentively. They talked for a while before the bus finally arrived at Tom's school, so he had to get off. He bid Camille goodbye with a bright smile. He decided he liked her vibrancy and energy. Camille thought to herself that she had never met a young gentleman like him. They went their separate ways, unaware that fate would soon bring them back together in an unexpected way. Tom went about his day at school, still wishing he were at home with his mother. He tried to concentrate on his classes, but all he could think of was how his mom was doing. Time seemed to drag on as each class passed. Finally, the last bell rang, and it was time to go home. Tom was relieved and was the first one to run out of the building. He stopped by the pharmacy to pick up the medication he had promised to get for his mother. He'd given him a letter because he was still quite young to be buying drugs on his own. The store manager looked at him skeptically. He was suspicious that the young boy had come to buy drugs on his own. But eventually, he sold the drugs to him after seeing the letter. After getting the medication, Tom went straight home to see his mother. He met her sleeping on the bed. She had barely eaten anything from the food he had left for her. Tom touched her body and felt her body burning up. The fever seemed to have gotten worse. He wondered if he had done enough to help his mother. Maybe she needed to be taken to the hospital after all. Tom let his mother sleep while he did his homework. She woke up just as he closed his books. She grunted weakly and asked how his day went. Tom replied that she needed to go to the hospital. He was worried that the fever wasn't going to break. Grace knew her son was right. She had to call in sick at her workplace, and if she didn't get well soon, she might lose her job, a risk she couldn't afford to take at the moment. So, she agreed to go to the hospital the following day. Tom wanted them to go immediately, but it was quite late, so he reluctantly agreed for them to go the next morning. Tom stayed by his mother's side throughout the night, monitoring her as she slept. He couldn't help but think about how much his mother had been working. Maybe it was the stress that caused her to fall sick. Was it his fault? Did she make herself sick because she worked too much to care for him? He eventually fell asleep on the couch that night. The next morning, they took a taxi to the hospital for his mother to get a checkup. After conducting tests, the doctor diagnosed her with mild pneumonia and advised that she be admitted to the hospital for proper treatment. Tom stayed with his mother at the hospital, but he had no idea that his world was about to be turned upside down. That afternoon, a police officer and a man stormed the hospital looking for Tom. The man turned out to be the pharmacy store manager where Tom had purchased drugs for his mum. Some drugs had gone missing from the pharmacy and the manager claimed Tom had stolen them. The cleaner of the pharmacy knew Tom and his mother. She didn't think the boy would do something like that. However, the manager was adamant as if he had personally seen Tom pocket the stolen drugs. The cleaner was not surprised. He had always been prejudiced against black customers. The pharmacy manager got Tom's address from his files and after a neighbor said they were at the hospital, headed there with a cop. They were still questioning nurses about Tom when he stepped out of his mother's room. The manager spotted him and alerted the officer, who called out to Tom. Rubbing his sleepy eyes, Tom looked over, confused as to why the officer wanted him. With his heart racing, he walked over and greeted the officer. As they talked about his visit to the pharmacy the other day, the officer asked if he had taken any drugs other than the ones he bought. Maybe he intended to sell those to help his mother. Tom frowned and shook his head, saying he didn't and would never do such a thing. The officer nodded, clearly not believing him. Because Tom was a young black boy, the officer didn't take him seriously, thinking he was lying to protect himself. Tom felt a surge of humiliation and anger. He was being accused of something he didn't do, and no one believed him. Tom was shocked when the officer began to place handcuffs on him, saying they would interrogate him further at the police station. Tom desperately asked the pharmacy manager to believe him and drop the case, but the manager simply rolled his eyes at him and called him a black thief. I'm not a thief, I'm innocent, Tom screamed helplessly. Don't play dumb, kid. I know you stole those drugs. I saw you, the pharmacy manager yelled. Tom begged the officer to let him go. He explained that his mother was being admitted to the hospital and he couldn't leave her alone. Mum needs me. Mum desperately needs me right now, he begged. He had always read in books that it was best not to resist getting arrested as it could raise the cop's suspicion. But Tom didn't care. He couldn't let them take him away. So as tears streamed down his face, he tried to force the cuffs off his hands. Let me go. Let me go. I didn't do it, Tom screamed. 
he was still struggling when someone suddenly screamed, leave that innocent boy alone. Tom, the officer, and everyone else looked up in surprise to see Camille, the pregnant woman from the bus the previous day. The black boy had given his seat to the exhausted pregnant lady, and the next day, this happened. Tom was shocked to see her standing there. She had a stern look on her face as she walked up to them. She told the officer that it was unjust to arrest a teenager based on suspicions only. She asked him if he had any solid proof that Tom committed the crime he was accused of. If not, it was very wrong for him to accuse and arrest the boy. It even looked like an unlawful arrest. The officer frowned and told Camille that two other managers had also testified that Tom had acted suspiciously. One even added that Tom had broken into a run as soon as he walked out of the store's door as if he was being chased. As the store's security cameras had a technical issue and had been down for some hours, there was no way to review the footage, and the repairer had said it didn't look like the camera would come up anytime soon. So, the officer was arresting Tom based on the witness's account. He told her it was considered a crime to obstruct an officer. But Camille didn't budge. She boldly said she was a lawyer, so she knew the law just as much as he did, if not more. Camille then said, she was Tom's lawyer, and she needed to go to the store herself to be certain the cameras weren't truly working and to speak with the witnesses. Just then, the store manager, who had been quiet since Camille stepped in, glanced at his phone, his expression turning nervous. In a trembling voice, he confessed that he had received a text from the store's owner minutes ago, informing him that the technical issue with the camera system had been resolved and that the footage showed that another boy about Tom's age and height had actually stolen the drugs. It was quite obvious it couldn't be Tom as the thief was white. Tom was innocent. However, the manager had received this information just as the officer was arresting Tom and he had been too afraid to speak up, fearing reprimand for his earlier mistake. The officer was furious at the manager for disgracing him in such a way. He had to remove the handcuffs from Tom's hands and let him go. He shamefully apologized to Tom for the scene and told everyone else that the matter had been resolved, but Camille wasn't ready to let it go. She said the manager had to be punished for the false accusation against Tom. He had to learn not to judge people based on the color of their skin. She promised to take up the case. Tom turned to Camille and thanked her for her help. Camille told the boy it was okay. She knew such a kind boy like him wouldn't do such a thing. She couldn't stand by and watch injustice play out before her. She smiled at him and told him not to worry. She would sue the manager for damages. Camille explained that she was at the hospital for her antenatal checkup and mentioned that her husband also worked there. She then asked Tom about his presence at the hospital, and he replied that his mother had been admitted. Camille offered to visit Tom's mother and promised to arrange for her husband to ensure she received the best possible care. Tom's mother, Grace, thanked her profusely and expressed surprise that her son had been accused of such a crime. She was also grateful to Camille for her timely intervention. Camille kept her promise, and Tom's mother was given all the help and assistance she needed. Throughout her stay at the hospital, she became friends with Camille, they talked and joked about a lot of things. She liked that Camille was vibrant and full of life. Just a day before Grace got discharged, Camille gave birth to a baby girl. She was overjoyed to be sharing the special moment with her family, especially with the new friends she'd made. True to her words, Camille took on the case and ensured the store manager compensated the family for the damages. Investigations revealed that the manager had bribed his colleagues to falsely accuse Tom. Fearing the store owner's wrath over the stolen drugs, the manager seized the opportunity presented by the camera's technical error to frame Tom. Aware of Tom and his mother's vulnerable situation, the manager thought he could escape accountability by accusing a struggling single mother and her innocent child, assuming no one would defend them. He was even willing to plant evidence to incriminate Tom, desperate to keep his job. The store had sternly warned him that another theft would result in termination. Unfortunately for him, Camille stood up for them all thanks to Tom's one act of kindness. Shortly after Camille was discharged from the hospital, she reached out to Grace with a generous offer. She asked if Grace would like to work as her baby's nanny and offered triple the salary Grace made at both her jobs. Overjoyed, Grace screamed, yes. Tom was right beside her during the phone call and when it ended, she threw herself into his arms, tearfully thanking him. She explained that if he hadn't given Camille his seat on the bus that day, she would never have gotten this life-changing job offer. Tom humbly replied that he had only done what she had always taught him, to be kind and considerate towards others. Grace hugged him tighter, proud of the compassionate young man he had become. What do you think about Camille's offer? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.